Today, I show you how to set up the air suspension on your mountain bike. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I show you how to set up your air suspension on your mountain bike to perform its best on any trail. For your suspension to perform at its best, you have to set it up correctly in order for it to correctly contour to every part of the trail. When your fork and shock compress, they absorb the energy generated from the impact and allow you to continue on down the trail. For your suspension to optimally work, it needs to absorb impacts and also extend back to its full travel and fill any holes in the trail. In order for that to work, you have to do what is called preloading your suspension. This is achieved with your own body weight. The way that we set this preload is by adjusting the sag. What is sag? Sag is the amount of preload your suspension has when you're sitting on your bike. Too little sag and the bike will lack the grip needed because it cannot compress enough to absorb impacts. Too much sag and the bike will not respond well to impacts causing you to bottom out. Setting sag is very easy to adjust, but very crucial. It's best done with a buddy, but it can be done by yourself as well. Before you start setting your sag, make sure your shock is at the full open position. When doing this procedure, do not apply any brake force. This will result in an inaccurate reading. Make sure that your suspension is actually up to par and working correctly. Most suspension manufacturers suggest an oil change every 50 hours and a damper and seal service every 200 hours. There's no point in spending the time setting up your suspension if it's not working correctly to begin with. Take it to a bike shop or do it yourself if you feel comfortable doing it. It will be like having a brand new fork or shock again. Let's start by setting the sag on your rear shock. For this procedure, you will need a shock pump, a friend or yourself, something to hold your bike up or lean on if you don't have a friend, and a zip tie. All right, so let's start by setting your air pressure. This will be printed on your shock or can be found online. Bounce up and down on the bike to allow the positive and negative air chambers to equalize. Make sure you're allowing the shock to achieve its full travel. About five pumps or so is okay. Get into your normal seated riding position, making sure to wear all of your normal riding gear, backpack, water bladder, pads, etc. Allow the suspension to settle for around five seconds or so. Have your assistant or yourself push the rubber O-ring on the shock stanchion up or down onto the shock's wiper seal. If you don't have a rubber O-ring, a zip tie works just as good. Carefully dismount the bike without allowing the shock to compress more than it already has. If your shock has a printed reading on the stanchion, then you already have your reading. If it does not have this printed reading, take a measurement in millimeters from the part of the wiper seal touching the stanchion to the O-ring. Record that measurement and divide it by the total shock stroke length. This can be found in your bike's manual. Then multiply that number by 100 to get the percentage of sag that you currently have. Most shock companies recommend 30% sag. Depending on what type of riding you do, you will have to determine if you want 20, 25, or 30% sag for yourself. To adjust the sag, add or remove air from the air spring as needed. For example, if your target is 30% sag and right now it shows 20%, you need to take air away. If it is greater than 30%, add air. To remove air, press the bleed button on your shock pump. Never use a screwdriver or something like that to press the Schrader valve on the air spring. It will release too much air too fast and you will have to start over again. Next, increase or decrease the air in about 10 PSI increments. You'll have to do this multiple times to get it right, so be patient. Just remember, after every time you adjust pressure, bounce the bike to equalize pressures and measure again. Never bounce the suspension with the shock pump connected. So let's set some fork sag. This is generally the same as setting the shock, except you'll be in attack position, standing. Set your air pressure to the manufacturer's recommended pressure. This can be found on the lower legs or online. Again, bounce your weight firmly up and down to equalize the positive and negative air chambers and free up the seals. Assume your attack position, allowing the suspension to settle for about five seconds. Have your assistant or yourself slide the O-ring down to the wiper seal. Carefully dismount the bike. It is best to rock your weight backwards into a sitting position. Note the position of the O-ring. Make the same measurement you did on the shock and get your sag percentage. Add or remove air to get the correct sag. Now, go ride your favorite trail and see how the bike feels. If done correctly, you should feel an immediate improvement in your ride. If you seem to be bottoming out, but you like how soft and plush the suspension is, consider adding bottomless tokens or volume reducers. If your fork or shock supports these add-ons, pick up a couple and put them in. They are well worth it. Now let's get into setting some rebound settings. Chances are you have a rebound setting on your fork or shock. It's another tuning element to further allow you to fine tune the feeling of your suspension and how it performs. Go ahead and turn it all the way to the full fast position. Bounce the bike. Now turn it all the way to the full slow position and bounce the bike again. You should be able to tell how drastically different both settings are. 
You want to set it so that it's not too fast and not too slow. Too fast will make the ride harsh and bouncy. Too slow and the shock won't rebound fast enough and also make the ride harsh. This one is going to be a personal preference and has to be done on the area you ride. You will find yourself speeding up or slowing down your rebound when you're out riding. You want the shock to rebound in a controlled manner. You don't want to get bucked off the bike, but you also don't want it to be so slow that you can't extend to full travel before the next hit. Just experiment, and I'm sure you'll be able to find a setting that works best for you. That's about all there is to it. It's super easy to do, and best of all, it's 100% free as long as you have a shock pump already. Even if you don't have one, they are super cheap on Amazon. That about does it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider liking and subscribing to my channel for more content just like this. I post weekly videos, and I would love to see you here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.